Hello Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, singles, couples, everyone in between, including cross watchers. Let's check in and see where your person stands when it comes to you at this time. Let's get some good shuffles here, angels and guides. Please bring in messages for Virgo about their person, where their person stands when it comes to Virgo, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they want where they're at all around and whether you're with this person or you're not even those of you who are estranged and at a distance doesn't matter what your current relationship status is it just matters if you have somebody on your mind and in your heart then this reading might be for you all right that feels good let's get two more shuffles here please for virgo sun moon rising venus Clear messages about where their person stands when it comes to them at this time. There we go, okay. Split the deck here. All right, Virgo. The overall energy between you is the Ace of Wands. How you see them is the Hierophant. How they see you is the Five of Swords. The shadow side of the situation is the Emperor. And the outcome is the nine of pentacles where they're at in their in their mind in their head when it comes to you eight of cups in their heart when it comes to you is the six of cups and in their soul is the king of pentacles wow on the bottom of the deck we have the two of pentacles interesting trying to find balance in this situation and or each of you are trying to find balance in your own lives could also mean juggling a lot of responsibilities in addition to this relationship and just other aspects of life that have you busy uh, there could also be some financial um, i don't want to say burdens or struggles i mean that could certainly be it but maybe just trying to get on more solid ground financially that could be playing a role yeah trying to make a decision uh somebody in this connection and maybe both of you respectively in your own lives are at a crossroads in your life or they are or at a crossroads in this relationship maybe there's some other circumstances at play here that is putting pressure on needing to make decisions about things not just this relationship but you know, personally, prof professionally, uh, family-wise, whatever it is, um, you know, indicating this ship in the background here and movement between the, the ship and the birds. I'm seeing movement. So some of you could be thinking about moving or wondering what the future holds in terms of your living situation or if you're going to be migrating someplace new or them. Some of you could be dealing with somebody at a distance from you as well. And, you know, you know, again, those of you that are in separation from the person that you're thinking about, maybe both of you are just busy in your lives and each of you have your own decisions to make about your life path and, um, you know, other, um, other circumstances basically that are at play in terms of what, what it's going to make your life look like, where you're going to live, what you're going to do, all that kind of stuff. So some of that is going on here. The two of wands is indicating trying to make a decision in terms of um, taking action on something so maybe you know and trying to take action and also setting down foundation in some way with the pentacles so whether it's taking action in this relationship or taking action somewhere else in your or their life um, and also there could be some concern too as far as making decisions in your life or them in their life could be bringing up a fear that it will steer you away from each other um, and close the door so there's some of that energy that i'm picking up coming in here knight of cups definitely a desire to date and or courtship um, so especially those of you that are in separation or estranged from your person there is a desire desire here maybe they for some of you are trying to make a decision about coming back in your direction especially on the horse galloping towards you making an offer holding out that cup and vice versa for cross watchers maybe this is a virgo who is you know in contemplation about doing this uh, towards you so definitely maybe for some of you the decision simply is that either Either you or them are trying to decide whether to you know extend an olive branch or reach out and communicate or take action definitely a desire here with the wands double desire here to take action uh, and put things into motion you know and even though this isn't a card that talks about making an offer 
You've got the Knight of Cups here making a love, a, an offer, a gesture of love or interest, setting down foundation um, in this connection. Those of you that are connected to somebody, you know, you're in a relationship, you're living together, you're married, whatever the case may be, there could be something going on here where you're at a crossroads in this um in this union and maybe you guys are trying to decide whether you continue on the path together or you move down a, a new path on your own um and plus we've since we've got the twos here as well and the knight of cups which is dating and courtship it's not a card of commitment right off the bat for some of you there could be a third party situation at play here where somebody is either thinking about or daydreaming of somebody else outside of the union there could be some banter and flirting going on here maybe it hasn't completely crossed the line yet um, but it's coming close to that in terms of the banter and the flirting and the communication um, little actions that are taking towards each other in terms of gestures of interest but again not necessarily it's kind of in that gray area where somebody hasn't maybe crossed the line completely um, and you know uh, broken their promise to you or you to them etc um, that kind of thing but it's it's in the gray area so there could be some of that uh, also and then also just maybe daydreaming about for some of you you've been in a tumultuous that's the word that's coming up here uh you know a union with somebody where you've had a lot of ups and downs sometimes the downs the downside outweighs the good in this connection and there could be some daydreaming going on here about you know uh, what would my life be like without this person? And if I went in my own direction, would I meet somebody new eventually? Or, you know, would I just be happier on my own? So whether that's you to them or them to you. Now, I know I've brought up a lot of potential scenarios here. Um, and that's, that's the joy of tarot. Take what resonates, leave the rest. You know, this isn't, this isn't a writing in stone. I'm, I'm sorry, a reading written in stone a writing in stone um and you know of course with the tarot i mean the energy is always ebbing and flowing we've got free will choice and people can make different decisions tomorrow but this is pointing to some type of energy coming in here where either there's a love offer coming in or somebody wants to make a love offer and they're trying to decide whether it's in their best interest to do that will they get rejected sort of thing or there is some dappling outside of a connection that's entirely possible. Now, I will say for, for those of you that are in a, a union where you've had a lot of ups and downs, this can be an effort to repat, to repatch, <laughs> to reconcile. Like where, is Mercury going retrograde or something? Because I'm having word salad here. I'm putting two words together. I wanted to say this could be the desire to reconcile and patch up maybe what's happened in the past, trying to put the difficulties behind you coming back together in a stronger union than before and trying to you know, forge ahead uh, together down the same path. So there could be that desire here where somebody really wants to turn up the romance or that love and feeling so to speak just to try to you know clean up whatever happened so that's a lot just off of those three cards we've got the strength card immediately followed by the sun so double leo energy here some of you could be dealing with a leo but it doesn't have to be but definitely strength here now for those of you dealing with somebody who's been lacking the confidence in terms of trying trying to approach you wanting to approach you as the knight of cups because they're just not sure, you know, between these two cards, the two of wands and the two of pentacles, they're just not sure where you stand. You know, for a lot of you, this person has been working on their confidence um, to approach you because there was a lot of burdens between you in the past. Maybe for some of you, this person messed up and they walked away with their tail between their legs and they're just not sure if Virgo would even give them the time of day. And then that could also, you know, play out too for those of you in a union that has been difficult with a lot of ups and downs. Maybe your person has a desire to work it out. They've been trying to find the courage to step towards you because something happened between you in the past where perhaps this person messed up kind of thing um you know and left virgo um you know with the upper hand in terms of this relationship for some of you you could be dealing with somebody who needs to eat a lot of crow in order to get back on your good side um and then those of you that are single and you're you know at a distance from your person again i'm definitely feeling this lack of confidence with them maybe this entire time or for however long it's been going on maybe for some of you you're dealing with somebody that there was a connection but you were never in a relationship it never truly got off the ground they might have had a lot of burdens in their life prior to you and as a result they were a bit a bit shell-shocked so to speak maybe traumatized and or damaged as a result of 
previous life experiences and it really hindered their confidence when it comes to love and romance. Maybe you're dealing with somebody who is a bit of a flower mouth and you know they kind of you know came around you like they were the cock of the walk but when it came th when it came time to like actually walk their talk they couldn't follow through and so now they've been working on their confidence this whole time and again really desiring to you know start uh, a new um, chapter of love and romance or something along those lines, wanting to extend some kind of offer, see where this could go. But again, they're just unsure if they should even approach you. They might be terribly, terribly scared uh, and fearful of rejection. Oh my God, that was a lot just off of the bottom of the deck. Good morning, Virgo. I'm having coffee. If you are too, feel free to take a swig. Coffee, tea, wine, whatever you fancy whether you're in the middle of the day and having lunch, maybe you're drinking a soda, whatever. You know, just go ahead. I might need another one before we get started. <laughs> mm. Num num, warm coffee on a cool fall day is like the best. Okay, here we are. This is the overall energy between you, the Ace of Wands. Wow. So the overall energy between you, there is definitely a desire. Even if it's not in your minds, it is in the fabric of the energy between you. This can also be in the fabric of the energy on your soul to soul level, soul to soul contract. Um, even if in your mind, you guys are like, I don't want to deal with you right now or whatever. There's too much under the bridge and you know, um, I don't know, whatever that saying is, water under the bridge. Well, water under the bridge, doesn't that typically mean let's let bygones be bygones and we'll move on? Um, but this this is, I'm getting a feeling here, especially with this Five of Swords, that there was some bent feelings here, Eight of Cups for sure, and um, confusion. Um, and, uh, you know, so something was said or misconstrued or misunderstood, or you guys weren't on the same wavelength at the time. Maybe you had a falling out or you just rubbed each other the wrong way. But, you know, there is this desire here. So whether this is in your mind, in your heart, in your loins, so to speak, because this is the boner card, this is sexual tension, sexual energy and attraction um, in terms of the physical, but also in terms of just energetically, this is talking about a new beginning, moving forward, putting the energy in. In, building the momentum so there is a desire here the overall energy between you is the ace of wands even if you had a falling out with somebody and you guys aren't on the greatest of terms right now or those of you that are estranged or you know separated from your person so that's really interesting because even if you haven't been in communication or contact with this person in quite a long time there's still very much desire there now this could be mutual between the two of you or them towards you or you toward them. Again, this is overall energy. Now, what this can also mean is that for those of you where you feel like it's dead and done and buried and goodbye, it's not over. And so spirit or universe, law of attraction or your soul contracts can be kind of swirling this energy around the two of you, even if you're not around each other. The energy is there trying to draw you back towards each other because there is either a desire for a new beginning or to take action or a need for some kind of a new beginning to take action. Maybe for some of you, this is just a need for communication, to take action on communication, to close out the chapter so you can move on in your separate ways. And others of you, there's a need for action to be taken in order for you two to come back together. Now, maybe for some of you, this is purely like a sexual thing. Maybe there's been a lot of mental strife between you, square peg, round hole. Sometimes it almost fits, but it doesn't quite. Uh, a lot of times when you're together, you have good times together, but then the times when, you know, when the chips are down and there's difficulty between you, you know, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad, that kind of thing. Uh, and maybe for some of you, you have wonderful sexual chemistry and the sex is amazing and off the charts and mind blowing, but in other areas of life, you just don't fit well together. So that could definitely be a possibility here for some of you, but nonetheless, I would say just first blush right off the bat, right off the bat. This is a positive card in terms of the overall energy, because no, no matter where you're at mentally, or psychologically towards each other, this energy is swirling around. So, so the forces of nature could be bringing you back together when you least expect it, all right? We'll definitely clarify and get some um, extended. Now, this is how you see them, which is really interesting, Virgo. For some of you, this is your spouse, okay? I'll just say that right off the bat. The Hierophant means, you know, two things. Definitely a card of union and marriage within the church and or faith, okay? 
and also the second meaning is a spiritual path. So how you see them, Virgo, is either some of you, this is your spouse, or those of you that are not married to this person, maybe you intuitively feel that they were your spouse in a past life. You know that you've had previous incarnations with them. So that's entirely possible. And then maybe other Virgos saw this person as a potential spouse in the future, a soulmate, the one that you were supposed to be with. Now, on the flip side of that, other Virgos, you simply just see your person as a spiritual being. Maybe they're on a spiritual path, a spiritual pilgrimage. Maybe they're still trying to figure themselves out, figure their life out, and, and find who they truly are, okay? How they see you is the Five of Swords, wow. They see you as mentally conflicted uh, and upset over them and or the situation, whatever happened, what was said or not said, should have been done, wasn't done, whatever the case may be. The Five of Swords is definitely mental conflict uh, for sure. Arguments, um, pettiness, somebody was immature in this uh, connection that left the other one you know, just um, irritated. Definitely a card of irritation and annoyance and um, very little um, patience, okay? On the shadow side, this card can indicate immaturity, one-upmanship, jealousy, uh, you know, um, game playing, all of that kind of stuff. Now, maybe for some of you Virgos, your person sees you as a manipulative game player, that's entirely possible with this card. They see you as the total shadow side. You're manipulative, you're a game player. You say one thing, do another. You speak out of both sides of your mouth, etc. So that's possible. Now for others of you Virgos, your Virgos, your person doesn't see you as the shadow side of this card, but they just see you as mentally conflicted over them because, you know, let I me mean, look at what happened in the background. You know, you've got a person that looks like they're dead, another person bent over crying and grieving, you know, fire like on the ground, this horse looks tired. So there could have been mental battles between you two and or piss poor communication <laughs> just came right to mind. A lot of swords energy here, a lot of misinterpretation and or misunderstanding between you two. And some of the bent feelings that you guys have toward each other are really based on misinterpretations, miscommunication, miss, et cetera, miss, dot, 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 whatever you want to put there. And it's really not true or real, right? Uh, the impression that you have of each other is not right and true because whatever happened between you happened in such a way that it like painted a different picture or, you know, you saw each other through a, um, um, through a, a morphed, lens, you know what I mean? Or a lens that wasn't clear. So something could be going on there. Now, others of you, if you're a Virgo dealing with somebody who did you wrong, betrayed you, messed this whole thing up, um, whatever, they could see you as somebody who, you know, you've got your sword drawn and you've got these other swords, meaning you're guarded. And if this person tries to come towards you, you are more inclined to take out your sword and chop off their head than you are to actually listen to what it is that they have to say. And you're still mentally conflicted about whatever happened between you two. This card has given me the feeling that a lot of you did not get closure with your person or as a result of the situation. And also, this is only two swords away from the seven of swords. Some of you are dealing with somebody who ghosted you just up and left, no explanation. They were in your life one minute, gone the next, and you don't even know what happened. Um, and so maybe for some of you, you could be seeing this person on the shadow side of the Hierophant where you just think that they're off in la la land and like totally in this fantasy land illusion delusion this person is a little bit off their rocker they don't totally have it together uh, and so that could be bothersome to you it'll be really interesting to see what comes out in terms of the clarifiers all right now this is interesting because the shadow side of what's going on between you um, you know, the shadow side that's at play in terms of a negative influence between the two of you is the emperor. So somebody in this connection is very much into control and order. Somebody tried to control the situation. They tried to control the other person. Um, it's, it's what they wanted, what they said, like their way or the highway. This person had no uh, flexibility, um, you know, they were incapable of seeing a different point of view. Maybe again, there was a lot of misunderstanding and they were just, you know, operating on whatever their burdens were from, you know, their life before you, something along those lines. Now, some of you, this could be a husband. Uh, you know, if you got the Hierophant and the Emperor, 
For some of you, you're dealing with a controlling husband who has other toxic and dysfunctional characteristics about him and or ways in the relationship. Somebody who is very much, uh, you know, insecure and controlling. The more controlling a person is, the more insecure they are. So that is interesting. Rule and order. Now, the other thing that could be going on with this is that perhaps there's law, uh, legal issues here. This could have something to do with law. The overall energy, not the overall energy, which is the Ace of Wands, the um, the um, <laughs> the shadow side of what's going on between you. Maybe there's a father figure that's standing in the way of your relationship, you know, an extended family member. Maybe this is legal, okay? So a lawyer or a judge. The emperor isn't typically representative of that, but it could be, especially with certain other cards around it. And also the emperor you know, executes the king's orders. So the emperor is, you know, the law and order, the jurisdiction, the, um, the, uh, the savior and the executioner all in one when it comes to the kingdom. Uh, so there could be something along those lines where, you know, something feels unfair, unjust, um, and, uh, you know, just, it, it, it's, 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 um, th and there's a power play. I'm feeling ego and power play as a result of that. And somebody um, is, you know, being treated very unfairly. So for some of you, you could be dealing with something illegally. But if not, then this is just representative of a person in this connection that is very controlling. Whether it is you, whether it is them, or whether it is a third party that is influencing your connection. Nine of Pentacles is the outcome. There you are. So Virgo is the Nine of Pentacles. So whether you stay single and just continue to thrive, or your person is single and continues to thrive, or you two just break apart from each other, you stay single for a while, that's entirely possible. Could this indicate perhaps a third party coming into the picture? Yes. Um, unlikely just from these placements, but I'm just going to throw that out there just based on some of the other messages that already came through. Maybe there's a new single person that's coming on the scene that is going to be catching the eye of you or this or or your person of interest. So that's entirely possible. First and foremost, I would say this is most likely Virgo because Virgo is Nine of Pentacles as well as the Hermit card. And you know, Virgo sitting pretty, got your money in order, you got got you know your ducks in a row, your your eyes are dotted, your T's are crossed. You know, you've got your shit together, and you just continue to thrive in the face of whatever this situation is with the person that you're dealing with all right so again more clarifiers will will bring that out this is how your person feels in their mind when it comes to you is the eight of cups so somebody walked away from the other person either you walked away from them already virgo okay and you basically you know laid down a boundary you told them where the bear's going through the buckwheat and then you just hightailed it out of there and left the ball in their court if they decide to you know rise to the occasion uh, and meet you where you're at, then you'll consider, you know, um, engaging them again. And if not, then, you know, you're long gone and you're just off thriving, you know, on your own. So in their mind, this is where they're at. Now on the flip side, for some of you, your person could have walked away from you. Um, and you know, the, in their mind, they're saying, you know what, this situation with Virgo has been going on too long. There's too much mental conflict. There's an ego control that play here. Um, you know, Virgo is fine without me. Yeah, there is attraction and desire to, to take action. Um, you know, but what it could be is that they're watching you taking action in your own direction and they feel like you don't want them or need them. So maybe they're thinking, well, I might as well just walk away from Virgo because Virgo is not interested. So this card has a couple of different potential meanings. This is also a card that does talk about going on a spiritual pilgrimage. They might feel that you drop them as dead weight and they see you really blossoming and flourishing without them, meaning there's a lot of growth and maturation and, you know, again, a spiritual pilgrimage that you've gone on or vice versa. Maybe this person feels they need to drop this relationship and go find themselves. So that'll be interesting to clarify. Where they're at in their heart when it comes to you is they're very, they're still very much hooked on you, Virgo. They think about you, they daydream about you, they might even dream about you in their sleep, but this Six of Cups is definitely indicative of them um, feeling this very strong connection to you. That's why they haven't been able to break the tie and there's still a desire to come in your direction, okay? So this Six of Cups is definitely indicating this is somebody that you have known for a while. This could be somebody from your past. Those of you that are estranged from this person, definitely, right? Somebody from your past that you knew. 
Um, this could be somebody from your past past, like your childhood or whatever, somebody you've known for many, many, many years. Now this card can also indicate a past life connection. So you guys came into this life already knowing each other on a soul level, and it was recognized at some point when you guys met each other or started to get to know each other or whatever. But there's definitely some wounds at play here that is acting as a barrier or burden or something that's not allowing this relationship to really come together and just be wholesome and good. Um, and you know, in that Six of Cups, uh, is is wanting resurrection, you know, again, the past life resurrection coming together. This is a card that does represent soulmates. It can represent karmic ties and again, just past life cycles, okay? And where they're at in their heart when it comes to you, wow. So that King of Pentacles, some of you could be dealing with a fellow earth sign, Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. It doesn't have to be. You could be dealing with any sign, but where they're at in their soul when it comes to you is this person feels like they are your spouse, whether they are male or female. They feel definite connection to you where you probably were together in previous incarnations as a married couple. And you could have even, you know, switched roles, you know, you're male or female in this life or that life, you know, if you're male in this life, you're female in that life or vice versa, or maybe you guys are playing the same, you know, gender roles in this life. It doesn't really matter. You, this could be a same sex relationship as well. It doesn't matter. Spouse is a spouse, but the King of Pentacles in the Tarot indicates husband um, and definitely a protective husband, well-to-do husband, a provider, somebody who is meant to step up to the plate and follow through in all aspects of commitment. Somebody who is tried and true, somebody who is there always, somebody who um, you know, does not uh, fault on their responsibilities or what, you know, what they say they're gonna do. And so this person feels like your spouse. For, for some of you watching, this person feels like your husband. For some of you, you are married to this person with the higher font and the King of Pentacles. This is where they're at in their soul when it comes to you as the King of Pentacles. So they know that this union is destined. Others of you who are estranged from your person, but that connection is still very much there, right? Even if you haven't seen or talked to them in a long time, there is still, you know, uh, there is still a connection. There's still that, what is it, that red, um, what, what a, what, what's that theory where it's the red string that's attached, you know, between two souls who are meant to come together. Now, maybe for some of you, you're dealing with somebody who knows that destiny calls for them to be your spouse and actually step up and follow through and be the spouse that you need them to be. But they've been so scared of commitment that they ran away. Okay, so some of you could be dealing with a commitment phobe and somebody who has been damaged by previous situations in their life, maybe even going all the way back to childhood. This could be family trauma and issues with their parents and things like that, that they're carrying forward and they haven't dealt with yet. Really interesting. All right, so what we're gonna do is move on to the extended. I wanted to pull some cards on camera for you, uh, but you know, I talk so long. What else is new? I wanted to pull some cards to clarify this, um, but we're at you know just over 28 minutes. This is getting too long. So what we're gonna do in the extended, I'm gonna pull from the ghost deck to clarify all these positions. We're gonna get some extra clarifiers here for the ghost tarot. We're gonna get some reversals and really open up the storyline and understand where's your person coming from? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What do they want? And in the why of this whole situation, clarify some of these cards that had multiple meanings that are, can be confusing you right now in the, in the general reading on YouTube. And then we're going to pull some extra clarifiers, might even get some from the Lenormand deck and open this up and see what is it that your person really wants. Might pull some other oracles about what they want to say to you and what they feel and all that kind of stuff. So if you'd like to join me for the extended, that link is provided below. I look forward to seeing you on the other side and the rest of you that don't join me over there, we'll see you next time. Bye.